Thank you, James. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Ottawa for Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey. It's the Islanders and the Senators, and with Bobby Ryan out for the season, Jason Spezza out day-to-day, -day. Mike Johnson, a new dynamic duo emerging in Ottawa. They have become the heartbeat and the leaders both on and off the ice for this Ottawa Senators group. We're talking about Kyle Turris and Clark MacArthur. They played together almost the entire year. Every time they separate them, they eventually end back up together again just a few games later because they have been terrific together both approaching or having career seasons and right now without Spets on that number one line they are for sure the offensive drivers of this playoff push for Ottawa. 21 year old Mark Stone plays right wing with them and you won't recognize a lot of the Islanders tonight. Ten rookies on the Islander roster. In fact if this is a preseason game they might not meet the league requirement for having enough veteran players in their lineup. They've dressed at least nine rookies in each of their last five games. And Anders Lee chips it out. Picked off by Josh Bailey as Eric Carlson turned it over, and Mark Massad is back to pick it up. And Eric Carlson back with it. Steps in across the line, Carlson drops the turn for the shot, the pad save made by Anders Nielsen, the Islander goaltender. Tipped around by former Senator Matt Carter. And now settled down by Matt Donovan for the Islanders. To Carter, who had a spirited tilt with Eric Goodbranson of Florida last night as Carlson brings it in. Carlson sends it back in front, and Zabanajad can't hold it. And in the penalty box after the fight, Goodbranson asked Carlson to be played as golf tournament this summer. So. <laughs> that mutual respect after a fight, apparently. Chipped in by John Kerson. And Craig Anderson going to be quick on that as Cal Clutterbuck was early the puck. Now sent back in front. Kerson going to get shot away. Now Calvin DeHaan with it. Shoots it, dribbles down, and Anderson makes the save on DeHaan. The Carp Ontario native play his first game in Ottawa. Today's game plan is brought to you by Tim Hortons, the official copy of the NHL. Gord, you talked about all the young players playing for New York. It's all about that youthful exuberance. Forget the system to bring the energy and the passion. Have fun in the NHL, and they're doing a nice job of it. And for Ottawa, limit the turnovers. They don't need to worry about offense, just worry about not giving up the easy chances against him. That first shift, we already saw a couple giveaways that won't make Paul McLean happy. Eric Carlson handles the puck far more than any other Ottawa player and turns it over far more. Now a centering pass by Colin McDonald bounces down in front. Chris Neal leaves it there and brought ahead by Mike Hoffman and across the line. And on back to pick it up. Han called up by the Islanders at American Thanksgiving has been with them ever since. For about 10 minutes from this arena. Now Ryan Strom has that clearing attempt to go off a leg. Hoffman shot blocked in front by DeHaan. And Travis Hamannick with it now for the Islanders across to DeHaan. Matt Martin trying to chip it out and Eric Riva stepped into him. The puck deflects over the glass and out. We talk about the need for Ottawa to limit their turnovers. You're talking about Eric Carlson. He has the puck more than anyone else. So this is the first shift, 15 seconds. Bad pass up the middle, almost pops it up. Puts one on to another stick here, trying to go DDD. But then you see the good, the same shift, 15 seconds later, joining the rush, beating his guys up the ice, queuing up a three on two, and that's what you get virtually every time out there, Carlson. Not the greatest in his own end, but boy, when the centers have the puck, there's nobody better. Thomas Hickey banks out ahead for the Islanders at the line. It's turned away by Chris Phillips. Now gathered up by Matt Cassidy, who fires it down in the Islander zone. Casey Zizekas looks ahead to Mike Calmo, who scored his first NHL goal on Monday against Florida. And now a penalty at center ice as Thomas Hickey collided with Matt Cassian. And it's Hickey who's going to get the penalty. Yeah, and Hickey's shocked that he's getting the call. And Hickey got clipped with a high stick after Cassian went down, but it's probably going to be a trip to Hickey as he stepped up right in front of me on Cassian here. And you see the stick come up and clip him in the face. And well, there's the kick of the feet out from under, and that's what caused the first penalty. And it's fortunate for Ottawa that he did not get paired up the four on four with a high stick. So the Ottawa power play goes to work. Clark MacArthur leads the way this season with eight power play goals out there along with Turris. And Stone up front, Carlson, and Weirkosh on the back end. And France Nielsen 
Wins the draw for the Islanders, but Hamannick can't clear it out. Now loose in front. Stone with a chance. He whipped it wide. Kyle Turris back with it. The Stone standing in front. Mark Hart with a shot. Pass. Saber across. Played with a cross. Stone had an open net. Couldn't tap it home. What a chance there for Ottawa. Now Weirkosh tees it up and Nilsson literally fights that off. Weirkosh back with it. Down low to Terrace. Two great chances for Ottawa so far in this power play. Brother spins and fires. Nilsson with a pad save. Here they come again. Stone side of the net. Weirkosh shoots. And Nilsson got a glove on that. And finally fired down the ice by Franz Nielsen. And right now it is whiteboard time on the other bench. They need to make some adjustments on that penalty call. Way too easy. Floyd in the middle of the ice with Doug MacArthur. And now Carlson. Slides it ahead for Milan McCulloch into the corner for Hemsky. Hemsky back to Carlson. Will have slap shot tip wide in front by McCulloch. Mike Hoffman steps up, tips into the corner. And McCulloch stepping to Donovan. Brock Nelson with time, fires it down the ice. The Islanders with a Nilsson, a Nielsen, and a Nelson tonight. As opposed to last year, they had straight strike McDonald and McDonald. <laughs> Drop back from McCulloch and across the line, shoots up. Just wide of the goal as Donovan whacks at it. And now Carlson turns it over. Clutterbuck in shorthanded. A breakaway for Cal Clutterbuck. In shoot, save made by Anderson. In the meantime, Carlson goes sliding into the Ottawa goal and is slow to get to his feet. Hemsky back the other way for the Sens. Drops it back for Hoffman. Lines his way in, and Mike Hoffman. Slides it back to the point to Cody Ceci. Across he goes to Hemsky. Alec Hemsky, 12 points in 13 games for Ottawa. Plays it back to the point. Out of the reach of Ceci. And the final seconds now of an Ottawa power play that has several good looks, but doesn't connect. Four shots on goal for the Sins on that man advantage, but the Islanders also had a short-headed breakaway. Phillips across with Cece, that pass bounced away from him, Matt Martin on it now. Shots are 5-3 Ottawa in the opening period, and Zach Smith almost turned it over to Ryan Strome. And Paul McLean shakes his head on the Ottawa bench. At the line, held by Donovan, lines and fires and ends, and the stop through traffic as Matt Martin was screening him. Lots of chance that both ends on that last power play, and with Cal Clutterbuck and Nielsen out there, five shorties between them. Clutterbuck's got three breakaway clean alone to the red line in. Nice save, a good read by Anderson. It looks five ball, and here's the chances for Ottawa going the other way on their power play. Clark McCarthy in the middle of the box there just opens up for one timers in. Irkhoff's on the back door. I think he has Stone wide open, and then later on brings one off the side of the net. But that was fantastic movement. Some good saves by Nielsen, but good movement by that power play. Now Donovan, Donovan steps up, Anderson the stop. And down low is Johan Sundstrom. Second round pick in 2011 who wraps it around. And now Sezikis, long shot deflected in front, losing the side of the goal, and Anderson dives across to take it away from Sundstrom. Craig Anderson, a sprawling save, and now pushing and shoving, working out to the right of the Ottawa goal. Craig Anderson makes the save, and great puts it in his blocker hand to show him where he's got it. You see the, how Blown to the front of the net, battling for rebounds, and it's Sundstrom who ties in, thinks he's gonna like, poke one in on the backhand, and look at Anderson with the player blocker hand. Dies back, drops the stick, and corrals it with his paw. That's what almost is, Hasekian. That is very much like Dominic Hasek, someone who played here ever so briefly in Ottawa. He it in for the face off. Against Zach Smith, Ottawa has scored first in its last six games. And now a shot drifted wide by Kevin Churchman. Fort Elgin, Ontario native. In his first couple of weeks of his National Hockey League career. Now Lee plays it back to Churchman. Long shot tipped again by Bailey, loose at the side of the goal and a chance in front. That's blocked by Mathot off the stick of Anders Lee. A very wide open first period. In comes Smith. Locks it in, shoots. Save made by Nelson. As Smith goes sliding by the Islander goal. Hoffman back with it now. Slides it across to Weirkoff. After Weirkoff shivers it off the skate, throws it back in front. Nelson down. And a bounce away from Smith. Now Zach Smith back with it. To Weirkoff. Walks in and shoots. Nelson the save through traffic. Back goes to Weirkoff. Shovels that across. 
shots are even at six in the first six and a half minutes of the first period. Nielsen up there by Neal. And Neal wins the battle for the loose puck. Pulls it back in front. Nielsen picks it up. Can't clear it out. And it's still loose in front. And finally moved out by John Kerson. Kerson lost the puck and now Bailey fires it into the Islander. Being hit behind the goal as Weircox was nailed there by Brock Nelson. And the Sens bring it back the other way. Henson gets into the line team. Rattled there by Clutterbuck. Tipped ahead to Kerson and knocked out at center ice by Cece, who fires it right back down to the eye of his own. Kicked it back in front for Nelson. Advantage out with a chance. He's stopped by Nelson. And a penalty, oh, pardon me, a high stick was being called. But play continues now at the line. Here's Chris Phillips. Drops it down to Hensky. Alex Hensky rink line to Cody Cece. He shot the Bucks off a stick on McCulloch. Can't get a shot away. And a chance for the Islanders as Nelson has the Hahn jumping in. Brock Nelson. Works in his pass to top the stick of Phillips. Appeared to bounce off the mesh. The play continues. Colin McDonald loose in the corner with it now. Spins that down to Martin. Back in front for McDonald. In for Donovan. Throws it back in front. The pass in behind Strom. Now Ryan Strom back with it. Taken down by Phillips. And Martin looks back for Strom. Fifth overall pick was Strom in 2011. Puck bounced away from him, and Hemsky has it now for the Sands. I heard Darren Pang talk about the, the pace in the Islander game with all these young players. You can see it firsthand, winning a lot of puck races, creating some problems for the Ottawa's defensively. Mike, we did the series last year in the first round between the Islanders and Penguins, and fair to say that the series went six. Penguins went in overtime in game six, but five on five, the Islanders were the better team for long stretch. Now a chance fire up the outside of the goal. Busting in with Jean Gabriel Pajot for Ottawa. And now Carlson. Back to McConnell on shot, and Nielsen makes the save on that. Able to hang on. 8-6, the shots on goal for Ottawa. No score in the opening period. You're watching Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey from Ottawa on TSN. Chris Neal, veteran player, certainly a player that might elect to not wear a helmet and warm up, but he's a smart guy. He's been around long enough. He knows it's dangerous out there. First rebound. Pops off Craig Anderson, just misses him, so he goes around the back of the net, no big deal, grabs the puck, and he takes another one in the side of the head off a rebound. It's dangerous out there for warm-up. He actually had to go off, get some repairs, check things out, and come back and ask Kyle Juris why you shoot the puck so hard. He'll bounce up and hit me in the face, but be careful out there in warm-up. Now Carlson, a wrist shot that goes way wide. Here's Stone on it, back from a thought. That pass missed him. And all the way back down to the Ottawa zone. Did you ever warm up helmetless? Always wore a helmet. I was hitting the head more often in warm up than in games with the clock. It's unbelievable how dangerous it could be out there. Now Terrence across to Carlson, sends it back in front, tipped on goal by MacArthur. That might not have counted, but Nilsson makes the save anyway. Now held in the line by Carlson. Nifty move at the line. In comes Eric Carlson. His shot was blocked, and Nielsen slides it out. He wanted a penalty there. He got hooked on that attempted pass, and Anders got away with one there. And now Turris fires it in the career high. 25 goals for Kyle Turris. Long lead pass for John Kersen. Swung around Rick Ryan for Griba, who leads the attack for Ottawa. Eric Griba busts in, shoots from a sharp angle. Nilsson makes the save at the line, held by Hensky. Now turn over to Clutterbuck, and the Islanders breaking out with numbers. Nelson. Drops for Clutterbuck, back in front, that pass just missed Kersen. And now down low to Nelson. Swings it back to Brett Clutterbuck with a chance, stopped by Anderson. And now Donovan swats it back down to the Ottawa zone. 18 shots on goal so far in the first half of the first period. It's 11-7 in favor of Ottawa. Talked about Clark MacArthur being an offensive catalyst here, and it's... Eric Carlson again finding it to him, and yeah, he might have angled that win. I think it would have counted, actually, just using a state to bank it on home. But Eric Carlson, always a threat, changing the dynamics of a rush. Three on three becomes a four on three, and good feed over to Clark MacArthur, who almost finished that one off. Now Stroman for the faceoff against Smith. Strom wins that draw back at the point. There's a shot by Hickey that goes high off the glass. 
Drops back down to Strom. Now McDonald bumping in the corner, picks it up. And at the line, Churchman can't hold it as Neal chips it by him. Got in by Strom to Martin. That shot drifts high and wide. Colin McDonald back on it. Lost it to Hoffman. He slides it up to center ice. The Mike, the Islanders were the quicker team last year in that series against Pittsburgh, weren't they? And that's part of what made this year so disappointing. It looked like they were going to take strides and build off of last year, where they were a better team. In fact, if it weren't for their goal in the Bokov playing as poorly as he did, they probably would have won that series. And yet they held that up with a tough year this year, but they have that speed and skill that you're seeing on display with all these young kids in this game. Won just nine of their first 35 games. That essentially sealed their fate. They're actually not bad. Even without Tavares since the all since the Olympic break, they're eight, five, and two. No Pozo tonight. No Tavares. No Michael Grabner, who's playing so well coming out of the Olympics. Yeah, played very well in Sochi. Time to determine goal scoring lead in that competition. Now here's the Han with it. He's played on November 1st. Islanders want to shoot up 5 to 4. Sezik is busting in for the Islanders. That slides off his stick. And now back at the point, Sezik is trying to hold it. Hondra slides that back to Carlson. Eight and a half to go in the opening period. Ottawa 4 0 oh, 1 in his last five games. Likely needs to run the table and get help to make the playoffs. Five points out. Entering play tonight. Terrace across the line. Throws it back to Trevor McCarthy. And the pass just missed. Nielsen up for Bailey. Back and up for Nielsen. Tips it right on goal. A pad save made by Anderson. And MacArthur quickly back the other way for Stone. Out of backcourt for Ottawa. Now drive up. Up ahead for Turris. Hands it around the discarded stick. Tried to bank that ahead, but Butterbuck got a stick on it. And now Turris back with it. And finally, Donovan settles things down for the Islanders. Up ahead for Nelson, off his skate, onside though. Pearson with a shot, and Anderson hangs on. There's no rebound, no score on the opening period. You're watching Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey from Ottawa. And Clark MacArthur is an underrated offensive player. And one part of his game that he doesn't get enough credit for is the fact that he is quicker than you would imagine. And defensemen have a hard time adjusting to his speed. They think they have him under control, and they don't. Last game against Calgary. Bodie thinks he has it. He flies right by him for a tip tonight. Same exact play. They think they have him, but he just flies right by him, gets in behind him for an almost identical tip goal. And him and Turris work so well together because Turris certainly understands just how fast MacArthur can be. Shot by Hamannick, knocked down. Leaves it front for Stone. He couldn't corral the bouncing puck. Now broken stick for Ottawa allows the Islanders to get a chance. And Zach Smith with the for another one. Now Cody Cece picks up a loose puck and finds Hoffman with it. Up ahead for Smith. Back to Hoffman. His shot goes off the stick of Dehan. Up and out of play. Mike Hoffman, another guy getting the opportunity to play. Some offensive minutes had been up on the first line a little bit. Now he's trying to add a little speed and dash to their checking line at Smith and Neal. But he's been a big time scorer elsewhere in the minors, in the Quebec League, and can put him in on the power play if need be. He can slide him up top two lines if they're not going. And it's nice to have one of those versatile guys that you trust to check well enough, but skilled enough to make plays in that role. Cut by his hometown Kitchener Rangers, bounced around the Quebec League, and then when he was called up by Ottawa this year, he had 30 goals with the Binghamton Senators. He was number two in AHL goal scoring at the time of his call up. Now a loose puck in front of the save made by Anderson in tight on Mike Calmo, who scored that first NHL goal against Florida on Monday. Churchman. Long shot drifts wide as Sundstrom was looking for it. Uh, Cassie can't chip it out. Sundstrom took a whack at that, and Weircox finally chips that ahead. Kaiser with it now, and knocked down by Cassie. Now Nelson got tied up there by Condra. The puck loose behind the Islander goal for a moment before Sezikas picks it up. Now Sezikas, and he got down the Ottawa zone as Carlson's back to pick it up. Eric Carlson averages five and a half minutes a game more than any other Ottawa player. The scary thing is he says he's not still feeling 100% with his Achilles injury. So he gets tired quicker than normal. And this is the 
getting tires early version of Eric Carlson. You'd hate to think what he's going to be like. He gets to feel a little better for the summer. Icky ahead to Lee. Anders Lee about to get shoots and Craig Anderson able to make the glove save. 6-12 to go. The NHL on TSN is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Since the Olympic break, the Islanders' leading scorer is Anders Lee. And puts a wrist shot in there. He's got six goals in those 15 games. And a big body out of Notre Dame. Another one of the young guys getting a chance to prove that he can play in the NHL here at the tail end of the season. He was second in American League rookie goal scoring with 22 this year. I think the Islanders would qualify for a preseason game with this lineup, but not by Barely. <laughs> Talked to Doug Waite just prior to the team coming out. He was joking about that very fact. He wasn't sure with this many rookies if they would qualify for one of those preseason games, but he raised his eyebrows, shrugged his shoulders, and said, hey, we're winning. And so that's always the bottom line for all coaches and organizations. So we can appreciate the youthful exuberance of all these young players in the lineup. Now Carlson up on his pocket pick there by Clutterbuck. Half back by his advantage, yeah, to Hemsky. Alex Hemsky for advantage at great pass. In comes advantage and penalty coming backhand shot stopped by Nilsson. But a penalty coming now, the Islanders, a hooking call, and Ottawa's going back to the power play. That might have been a penalty shot. So the Sens will go to the power play for the second time in the hockey game as Zibanejad was sprung on a great pass from Carlson. Galvin DeHaan into the box for the New York Islanders and he gets caught on a nice stretch pass here from Hemsky to Zibanejad who slides in behind him and there's this little pick of the stick that was called a penalty and Zibanejad trying to protect it off so hard that he loses balance himself, pulls himself almost all the way across. Nielsen doesn't really get the chance he wanted to. But another nice feed from Hemsky. And Ottawa back to the power play after generating four shots on goal on its first, although the Islanders did have a shorthanded breakaway from Cal Clutterbuck, who has it now, and bounces that down the Ottawa zone. So Calvin DeHaan with lots of family and friends here tonight. Here's his name on the PA system. Unfortunately, he's in the penalty box as Carlson slides it back for Turris. Kyle Turris walks around Clutterbuck, drops it off for Weirkopf. Centering pass off the leg of Hamannick. Now Donovan off the sideboards, and Carlson has to retreat as Nielsen busts in. Drops it back for Clutterbuck with a shot, bouncing down in front. Nielsen save, rebound, Clutterbuck through right to the crease. Another great chance for Clutterbuck, shorthanded. And a penalty coming to Ottawa, Hamannick with a long shot. Knocked down by Anderson, and that'll do it for the Ottawa power play. Just 42 seconds in as it'll be Mark Stone going off. We saw Nielsen and Clutterbuck connect for a breakaway at the first power play for the Ottawa Senators, and they almost get another opportunity as Mark Stone's forced to take a desperation hook here to bail out Craig Anderson as Clutterbuck puts it right across the goal line. Look at the angle here. Really Craig Anderson gets it, but right across the goal line. Unbelievable how close that was. That it didn't bounce it off Anderson's stick. Butterbuck got three short-handed goals this year. Nielsen, by the way, has 11 over the last four years. It used to be him and Grabner together. Which a dangerous duo of short-handed. Now Zibanejad busting in for Hemsky. Walks in. Zibanejad throws it back in front. He was trying to fight Hemsky, and the crowd grown shoot. Hemsky had curled off in the corner to admire the nice give and go. Wasn't expecting the one more return pass. Now Bailey with it, four on four for the next 45 seconds, barring more penalties, as Bailey winds his way in. Drops it back to Churchman. That shot goes off the leg of Pajo. And Nelson gets slammed on the side, boys by McCulloch. Bailey in the corner, throws it back for Nelson, but Chris Phillips steps in front of him. And Phillips muscled off Bailey and finds McCulloch, lifts it high in the air, and finds Pajo streaking in. Pajo shoots, Nelson makes the save on him. And now Cody Cece shoots that off the stick. Up and out of play, and the crowd thought there should have been a penalty there. Good speed on display by the center's four on four, though. Both with Hemsky, Zabanejad, and then that more recent champ. And you see the hands and passing Hemsky. 
advantage of that little drop pass. Hampton slides it back through brilliantly, and then he's got to stick up in the air, cruise into the corner, looking for Zibanejad to shoot it. And then here you see the little lob jump, and McCulloch drops it down nicely for Pajot, and there you see why the crowd is upset. No penalty as he's taken to the net, but nice plays in the 4-4. Four four. little extra open ice. The center is taking advantage. Draw one by Strom. And Donovan picks his way ahead, being harassed there by Turris. At the line, Donovan tried to tip Ooh. that ahead, but the play was just offside. TSN's coverage of the World Men's Curling Championship continues tonight when Kevin Cooley and Team Canada face Scotland at 2 a.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific. Plus, you can watch online at tsn.ca or wherever you are wherever you are by downloading the TSN Go after iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. A late night curling for your enjoyment. Three fifty-two to go here in the opening period. The shots are even at twelve apiece. Cal Butterbuck has four of the Islanders' twelve shots. Now Mark Mathot throws it back in front. Donovan can't clear it out, and apparently coming down to Ottawa as the helmet of Brock Nelson was knocked off. He was clipped by Zach Smith in front of the net. Right now, Denny LaRue checking to see the damage, to see if it's going to be two or four. Well, it's going to be a five on three for the Islanders regardless. Ottawa is shorthanded more than any team in the league. And here it is. Bounce it pocket right there. Gets the Shaft of a stick across the side of Nelson's face. I'm not sure exactly what Zach Smith's complaining about. It wasn't Nelson's own stick. It was Smith taking him to the side of the helmet. So, the 34 seconds, five on three. And the Islanders might have had 13 minutes of five on three time this year. They've scored six times. A lot of those with John Tavares out there quarterbacking things, though. So, let's see what they do with this revamped unit. Strom, Bailey, Nielsen are the forward unit, but the draw was won by Turris. And the thought across to Chris Phillips on his backhand. Tough play, but he gets it out. Now brought ahead by Nielsen, trying to find Bailey. That was disrupted by Turris. And Bailey back with it for Franz Nielsen. Flies it back to Donovan to try to chip it across the hammer. The pass misfires. Travis got 10 seconds to go with his penalty. Strong. Throws it back to Donovan, across to Hamannick, down to Nielsen. Hamannick teed up for the one-timer, here it comes, he fires, in as he gets a piece of that. Stone is out. Now back at the point is Hamannick. Across he goes to Donovan. Now back in front of the with the shot, scores! Josh Bailey, power play goal, and the Islanders have taken a one nothing lead. What a shot by Josh Bailey as centers get caught trying to chase on the four on three. Bailey pops out. Condra doesn't get back down in time to cover. And oh my goodness, quick release. Top glove. No chance for Craig Anderson. That's an unbelievably good shot for Josh Bailey. And others get up by one. Well, Josh Bailey has his eighth of the year. He scored in back-to-back -back games now, Mike, but he went through a 37-game goalless drought this year. He is, and has been for a long time, uh, a bit of an enigma because you see shots like that and the way he skates, how strong he can be, and he is a very talented player. One of those players, he played as an 18-year-old out of Windsor, probably would have been better served, spent a little bit more time in junior, probably wasn't quite ready to play in the NHL, stunted his growth, so he's had moments, but they've come in spurts and not been consistent enough, but my goodness, that is an elite NHL shot and release. Look at a little half slapper right by the ear, not even in the corner. Perfectly placed for Josh Bailey. That's the 59th power play goal allowed this year by Ottawa, Ottawa the second most Islanders. in the league. Ottawa was ranked number one on the penalty kill a season ago. Here's Pearson with it, wraps it around, but the pass broken up by McCullough and chipped up by Hemsky. So moments after the stone penalty expires, the Islanders connect on the five on four. This is John Pearson. Trying to knock it out. Play, 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 play. At the line, chipped by Strom. And Hamannick back to pick it up for DeHaan. Hamannick calling to the bench, are we good? Because he knew there was a chance coming behind him. He didn't want to touch it until he made sure 
The other defense was off the ice. Kamenek and DeHaan are two of the six defensemen the Islanders drafted early in 08 and 09. Now Strom with it. Up for DeHaan. He gains a line and fires it around. Under two to go now in the opening period. Chris Deal. Up ahead for Hoffman, who banks that down to the Islanders zone, and DeHaan is back to pick it up. And Neal just missed DeHaan, as Neal knocked the stick out of DeHaan's hand. DeHaan's looking where the puck was. Once he run into me, the puck's already up the boards. For an interference, fellow, I think he's got a case. And now Phillips goes to the cross, and is picked off by Bailey. Ahead he goes for Martin. Matt Martin throws it back in front, but the play was offside at the Senators' line. On, on the bench, looks to be okay, but Chris Neal comes in to hit, he always does, but puck's long gone, and Chris Neal likes to finish his check instead, and that absolutely should have been called interference. We know Chris Neal likes to finish his checks, leads the Ottawa Center once again at over 225 coming in. He's done it that way for a long time. One of the guys you got to know when he's on the ice, as there are a couple here for Diners as well, and Matt Martin and Cal Clutterbuck. Yeah, Martin led the league last year and leads again this season. Clutterbuck is annually one of the top five players in hits. Sometimes I debate the validity of those stats, but with Matt Martin, not at all. <laughs> he, he runs into anything. It's bumper cars out there. Fuck off to him. Now Stone chips it up. And as Carter goes back, gets an icing call against Ottawa. In the final minute now of period number one. So here the Ottawa Senators are in a must-win game, as they all are for the Senators basically down the stretch. And you're thinking, well, they're going up against the Islanders, who have 10 rookies playing, including a rookie goalie, who should be able to handle them. But when you get teams like this in situations like this, sometimes all that youth and freedom and no pressure works to your disadvantage of the Senators, and the Islanders playing very well. Churchman plays that back to Hickey with a shot that deflects high and wide. Five years ago, Thomas Hickey, the captain of Team Canada, the World Junior in this building. Churchman shot was blocked. Accepted the trophy. The last time Canada's won that tournament. Now Stone to Turris. Knocked away by Churchman. And Turris had fallen, so Stone had to retreat. And Eric Carlson settles things down. 30 seconds to go in the period. Up ahead for Hemsky. Alish Hemsky leaping in now for Ottawa. Spins and shoots. Nilsson makes the easy save. Here's MacArthur back on it. And Clark MacArthur turns it over to Nelson. Picked up by Clutterbuck. In he comes. Cal Clutterbuck. Trying to pass it back in front. Blocked by Mathot. Harrison loose in the corner. Final seconds now. The period. Hemsky throws that ahead to McCulloch. And his long shot goes wide of the goal. As Hamlin picks it up. And Josh Bailey's power play goal stands as the only marker in the first period. As the Islanders have a 1-0 lead after period number one, here comes our first intermission, James Duffy and the panel. 15 shots against in the first period for the Ottawa Senators as they were jumping on some of the gifts that Ottawa was giving and some of it's generated by the speed and the quick sticks and active forecheck that the New York Islanders put in front of them and all of a sudden the Islanders attacking with speed, creating chances, driving the net, making Craig Anderson make save after save and you can see why the Islanders are playing some of their best hockey of the, league, of the year when all four lines are able to roll over and play with this kind of pace. And thank goodness for Craig Anderson, who was very sharp in that first period, beaten on only one shot he had no chance on. But the breakaway, a couple other good opportunities, some tips and rebounds, and the New York Islanders probably feel they should be up by more than just the one as they had several good chances. Craig Anderson, that was as clean as I've seen him in a while, both seeing the puck and in his movement and was exactly sharp except for of course the one laser by Bailey that beat him. For the Islanders you ask the question why aren't they in playoff contention at least after making the postseason last year for the first time in six years. They're last in the league in team save percentage and their goaltending yeah. was horrendous in the first three months of the season. Yeah, and save percentage a little bit of a function of the team in front of you but it's also just how good your goalies are playing and they're just have not been good enough Bach off the nail and off the injured list, and the other guys just haven't gotten it done. We saw Jack Capuano, the Islander coach, there. He's number two 
on the franchise list for games coached in the regular season. Now, Just he's a, a couple good. behind Al Armour. Yeah, about 1,200. <laughs> in comes Stone now for Ottawa. Throws it back in front. That was actually tipped wide by Anders Lee on the back check. And now MacArthur steps in for it. Franz Nielsen couldn't knock it down. Carlson finds MacArthur. Mark MacArthur to Eric Carlson. Long shot, chopped down in front by Nielsen. And Anders Lee is back on it. So Anders Lee is not a European, despite the name he's from a Dyna, Minnesota. John Person is a Swede. <laughs> he's from Foster's one, Sweden. Here's Parker with it now. Backhands that down the sin zone. It bounces away from Anderson. Here's Hickey. Across he goes to Churchman. Fires a point down to Anderson and knocks out to the corner. And the puck loose along the boards, picked up by Neal. And settled down by Mathana, trying to play it out, but couldn't. Clutterbuck sends it back across, and Pearson had the pass, bounce away from him. Brock Nelson sends it back in front, and bounce away from Clutterbuck. And Clutterbuck has had a handful of great scoring chances in this game. He's a shooter. Every time he gets the puck on a stick, he's only looking at one thing, and that's getting it on in the net. So we talked about the Islanders struggling with their defensive play, Ottawa is giving up a goal a game more than it did last year, and Paul McLean played on the last team that saw goals against go up by more than a goal from one season to the next. That was the Winnipeg Jets huh. back in 1980-81. Yeah, they got 3-9-3, there wouldn't be that much more room to get up there for those Jets that oh, Paul that was, McLean was a part of. That was, that was the 80s. There's Hemsky with a shot that bounces off a leg. Hemsky back with it. The Edmonton Oilers back in those days routinely gave up three and a half goals a game and won Stanley Cup. And had a Hall of Fame goalie. Yeah. You might get the fourth one on it, but you never get the fifth. <laughs> the goalies nowadays only dream of such a luxury. Well, his worst nightmare was Coffey with two, Messier with two, Gretzky with two after two. He'd make 18 saves in the third. But two of those three guys would get their third, so all's well. There's Rabowitz, fires it down. That was expansion-fueled hockey, and of course the NHL hasn't expanded now in a dozen years, so it's a much different game as the talent bucket fills up. We asked Paul McLean about what's going on with the chance, with the chances and the goals against going up, and he just says his number is 11. When they give up 11 or less scoring chances, right. he feels they've had a good game, good chance to win. If they give up more than that, which he feels they've been doing with regularity for much of this year into the high teens, then they're unlikely to win, and that's been proven out. Our center pass was off the leg of DeHaan. Scooped up by Strom, who banks it up to center ice. The stat you'd love to see that teams guard so jealously is save percentage on scoring chances. Yeah. And shooting percentage on scoring chances. Here's Paul Julian talking about that last week. How good Chad Johnson has been in backup and save in his save percentage against scoring chances. The stat that they track closest for their goalies. It's not kept by the league. Teams keep scoring chances themselves, and it is subjective. In comes Travis Hemmer. Sends it back in front. Tap by by Strom. Throws it back in front for Matt Martin. Roughly though, Mike, NHL teams scored about one in six scoring chances. Now McCarthy back to Stone with a drive, he hammered it wide. And about 1 in 11 shots on goal. Carlson tees it up, save made by Nelson. Loose puck in front, goes right back to Carlson. Tees it up again and fires off a leg. Bounces down in front, and Carkner struck that away from Stone. And now brought ahead by Halmel. Mike Howell, the Waterloo, Ontario native. Played for Owen Sound in the Ontario League. Sound is an undrafted free agent a couple of years ago by the Islanders. I've never seen Mike Halmel play before, but I've watched him play for 24 minutes. I can already tell he's a bit of an agitator out there. Smaller guy who's always got a little po extra poker push. In comes Carlson now, knocked away from him, and Halmel sweeps it back out to center right. Shots are even at 15 apiece. With four and a half gone in the second period. And back is Neal for it. Hoffman now around Churchman. 
which might not be the pronunciation when you take a look at the name. The first guess, and comes Bailey with it now. Drives it across, the puck back in front for Bailey, the shot was off a leg. And a chance now for Hoffman. Mike Hoffman streaking in. In behind Nielsen, throws it back to Smith, in, shoots, close to the save. And loose puck in front, cleared away by Anders Lee. Now Zabanajad with it. Hoffman can really scoop on the American Hockey League fastest skater competition at their All-Star game this year. And now Churchman back with it. Zabanajad swings it back in front, hits through the shot at the outside of the goal. Hitsky back with it, throws it back in front to McCulloch. And here's Zabanajad with it, crisscrossing with Hitsky. Trying to toe drag that around Churchman. Now Hemsky back to the manager. Trying to wind it back in, and Churchman plays it out. And again, the crowd groaning at the multiple passes between Hemsky and Zabanajad. George, you mentioned Mike Hoffman, fastest skater at the AHL All-Star game, and you saw a little taste of those wheels. Jumps on a loose puck here, doesn't create much of an angle, but pulls away from Bailey. And it's one thing to skate fast, but it's another thing to be able to see the ice while skating quickly. You see a nice pass to Smith. And Al Shevsky, who is loath to shoot and even more rarely takes slappers, does both there as he tries to get it up on the short side. And after that most recent icing, that is a timeout for the Islanders as Jack Capuano wants to do a little coaching with his young group as well as, more importantly, let them catch their breath. Fourth year for Capuano with the Islanders, who was named as an interim coach in mid-season four years ago. Yeah, team very much in flux. I say, always a bit of a turmoil. Up for sale right now. Moving to Brooklyn. Moving to Brooklyn. Could be next year, likely in a couple of years. Gar Snow always has a little bit of something swirling around him as well. They got a lot of criticism on the island for how they handled the Thomas Vanek situation. Gave up a lot to get him. Didn't get much back when they traded him again at the deadline. And now Churchman bangs it off the boards and Bailey sweeps it out. But in John Tavares, they have a franchise building block. Their problem for many years of late has been in goal. Yeah. I don't know if they have an answer available to them yet. Neil's is a young kid, Kevin Poulan, the Bokov older. Now McCarthy drives the center it. Here's Stone on it. Stone had that knocked away, but it bounces down to Turris, and Kyle Turris slammed there by Nelson. Terra stays on the puck. Trying to bank that back in front, off a stick, and back down the ice it goes. And now Mark Mathot with it for the Islanders, for the Senators rather. To Zach Smith in across the line, and Smith. Carpeggio shot over the shoulder of Nilsson, it rattles off the glass. Tony sees it. The Smith shoots, blocked in front by DeHaan. Colin McDonald slides out ahead, trying to find Strom. First pro year for Ryan Strom. He joined the Islanders American League franchise at the very end of last season. So this is his first full pro season. And his third NHL call-up. Nelson jumps out to pounce on that. Islanders lead 1-0 after a period and a bit. Alish Hemsky's had his chances tonight. A great addition so far for the Sands. Ottawa will play the rest of the season without Bobby Ryan, who's undergone sports hernia surgery. Ryan standing by with our Brent Wallace. Thanks, Gord. Six days ago, you underwent the surgery. How did it all go, and how do you feel? It, it went well, obviously. We knew it was coming for a while, so we were prepared for it, and the doctors were well aware of it as well. And uh, it, it went quick and was successful, and that's the most important thing. The time you were leading the team in goal scoring, now that you can't play anymore, how do you assess this season? Is it disappointing for you, or are you happy with how it went? It had its ups and downs. There was times when, when I think as a team we felt really good about where we were at, and then we obviously had a lot of setbacks. Uh, I think this year for me was more of a winning than winning thing, but uh, I, I felt comfortable being here. It was a big change, obviously, but uh, it, it was a good one. One thing people talk about you having this injury since November, how tough was it to play through this pain? You know, at first it was okay, and, and uh, it was manageable, and then it continually got worse. There was no defining moment where uh, there came a point that, you know, that I couldn't skate or, or contribute as much as that earlier. It just was a gradual thing. And, when I hit the wall in Dallas, we knew that that was probably going to be the end of it. Just cool. My pleasure. Pretty good first year in Ottawa for Bobby Ryan with 23 goals. 
And the fact that he was playing with that since November, there's a lot of credit for how he hung in there throughout the year. Now Hemsky winds his way in, drops it back for McCulloch. Jason Spetz has been out day to day for Ottawa. So not through what Hilbert turned. He did skate this morning with the Sens. He said he felt pretty good during the skate, then went in to cool down afterwards, and things tightened up on him. He had to say he's a no go. Now grab over the shot that bounces out wide. Here's Sezikis with it. His curry attempt knocked down by Hoffman. His shot pinballs off a couple of legs to the sideboards, and Josh Bailey can't knock it out. Grab it to Hoffman. Watch it and shoots over the shoulder of Nilsson, who was screened there by Smith. Here it down low. Smith got bumped there by Carter. And Hammond to the line and just out. Poke head down by Sezikis. Lock in two on one. Drops it back. The pass misfires. He tried to find Helmo. He kicked it down on Anderson to make the stop. Now a lead pass for Smith. Jack Smith drops it off for Hoffman. Nice pass. Knocked away by Carpenter. Now Smith wins the battle for the puck. And finally Anders Lee banks it out. And back is McCott for it. The shots are 16-15 Ottawa. 1-0 the Islanders lead on a power play goal by Josh Bailey. MacArthur swings that rink wide for Carlson. Eric Carlson sends it back in front. Miss Turris with it. And now Kyle Turris bounds it back to Carlson. Looks in front to MacArthur. Spins and shoots. And Nielsen got a stick on that pass. Bouncing down in front. And now Parker knocks that ahead. And Donovan finds Lee. Anders Lee, the 23-year-old. Bumped there by MacArthur. Plays it back for Nelson. And Nelson spins back. He watched there by Carlson. The puck comes free. MacArthur. And banged up the puck by Clutterbuck. And now Anderson sweeps that across to Turris. Up the center ice it goes and Brock Nelson back to pick it up. Thomas Hickey. Once the fourth overall pick of the draft for the LA Kings. Picked up on waivers by the Islanders last January. And so the centers are trying to go on this run to the playoffs. They obviously want all their players available to them, including their captain, Jason Spezza. And he was out at morning skate. He looked pretty good, took part in most of the drills. Did the power play first unit drills in a regular rotation. You see him down on the ice, possibly stretching things out a little bit. And talking to Coach Paul McClain on the ice in the morning, and Paul McClain left the morning skate thinking, yeah, he's going to be a go tonight. And then we were actually in. Paul McLean's office when Jason Spezza came in and said, can I have a word with the coach? We jumped out of there and it was Spezza telling him that things had tightened up and he couldn't go anymore. So they're just trying to survive one more game, win against the Islanders and then get Spezza in for the duration as they try to go on this miraculous run. Now Pajot with it, fires and that puck deflects high off the meshing. You see McLean's doppelganger is back behind the Ottawa bench. Yeah, I did see that. There he is. <laughs> Honestly. That's unbelievable. I know we've seen it before, but it never doesn't get to me. It is. <laughs> I know he's got something in his hand the coach would like yeah. once in a while, but he's, he's living the life public game probably wants to right now. <laughs> 10 2 to go in the second period. Plays it across to CC. Isn't it a kid in Calgary that used to mimic Mickey Kip or something? Yeah. That's the closest I've seen to this. And now Zizekas busting in with Halmo. Back goes CC for it as he collides with Zizekas. And the puck loose in behind the Ottawa goal is spun around there. It was Zibanejad and a penalty coming out at Halmo. And it's coming against Ottawa. Looks like Halmo took down Zibanejad, but they're going to call Zibanejad for the hold, and it's the Islanders who will get the power play on Scotiabank. Wednesday night hockey on TSN. The wait is over. The new season of Game of Thrones premieres Sunday at 9 p.m. only on HBO Canada. Contact your TV provider to subscribe. We were both confused on this penalty call. We thought it was going to Halmo here, who tangles up with Zibanejad and actually drags him down. And veteran referee Dave Jackson right there in the corner is fooled on that one. That is 
called on the wrong team. That's going to be a penalty on Helmo for holding or tripping. On the goal, the game scored by the Islanders on the power play, the 59th power play goal allowed by Ottawa this year. One off the league lead. Dubiously held by the Florida Panthers. And Paul McLean had the whiteboard out during the commercial break, diagramming the penalty kill, trying to circle, being aware of that man in the middle, right where Josh Bailey was that scored the goal. Wanting a tighter rotation from the weak side forward in support of the Islander forward in the high slot. Nine to go in the second period as Nielsen brings it ahead. John Tavares remains the Islander leader in power play goals with eight on the year. Now brought in by Zach Smith. Throws that down in the corner. Hellenick picks it up. And Josh Bailey up ahead for Nielsen. He's got Strom and Donovan with him. In comes Nielsen. Drops it across to Strom. Plays it back to Bailey. Goes behind his back. But the pass intercepted by Condro. Flips it up to center ice. Bailey stuck it between there. Wanted to pull something fancy through his legs, but there's no space for him to do so. Donovan. A break up here last year. Well, the Islanders have found himself parking the American League this year for all of December. Throws that down in the corner. Plays around for Nelson to pass under his stick, and Hamannick can't hold the line. Travis Hamannick spins away from McCulloch, who stays with him, giving a little shove. And finally, Hamannick has to drop it back for Donovan. Donovan gains the center line and puts it ahead. 30 seconds to go, and there's a bad Jack Henley. Anders Lee drops it off to Nelson. Into the War Road, Minnesota, plays that back for DeHaan with a drive, and that got through to Anderson, who knocked it away. Now Nelson back with it. And Turris knocks that ahead for Ottawa. Now Turris, final second of the drive again. Penley sidesteps to Hans hit. And Donovan picks it up for Lee along with Punterba. As the batter Jack steps out of the box. One shot on goal for the Islanders on that power play. Churchman lays that down deep in the Ottawa zone. Now Clutterbuck tries to throw that in front. Come on, knocked away. Now Ottawa breaks in three wide. McCars are looking for a change. Slides that down to the Islander zone. Zibanejad comes in. Hickey steps away from him. And Thomas Hickey looks for Hamel. Anderson knocks it down. And Hemsky chips that to the line and just out. Now the play's offside at the Islander line. In a channel on TSN is brought to you by Asante from investment, tax, and estate planning to retirement. Asante Wealth Management provides complete financial advice. We talked about the one shot on net, the power play. Look at this puck going to the right side of the net and then dives straight to the other side on Craig Anderson. This puck fly moved a foot and a half off a of stint and then bounces, and Anderson had to make a pretty athletic save on what could have been just a routine dump in. There's a long shoot in by Grava, handled by Nilsson. Now Grava knocks it down again. Hoffman shields off the check of DeHaan, but DeHaan steps back in when they tangle in the corner. And Strom pokes that, pokes that rather back for DeHaan. Up ahead is Strom, trying to step around Chris Phillips. And Phillips back to the cross. It's been badly off the end boards in that bank attempt. And now Grabber throws that in front of it. Colin McDonald picks it off. Back he goes to Carter across to Hammond. Travis Hammond with a shot. Blocked by Hoffman. And Martin can't hold the line for the Islanders. And now an icing call against Ottawa with 5.53 to go in the second period. They don't like it without helping their own call. Cause Eric Grabber. He's got the puck in the corner, safe plays up the wall, and he tries to find somebody in the middle that is not available, and that's not Eric Grabber's game anyways. Fights off a check pretty good right there, but Chris Phillips, you gotta get your head up there. Know that Colin McDonald's right on top of him. Safer play unless you're sure. Now, Bain will take the draw against Smith. 
Phillips. Up to the line, but not out. Donovan goes down to the lead. Anders Lee back to Donovan. Rossi goes to Karkner. Karkner finds Lee. Nielsen got it down to Pin, but Chris Neal stepped in front of him, and Smith can't chip it out as the Islanders fire it right back in. And Nielsen is all over Drive and Vaughn and descends chip it out. Donovan. Through the middle chip down in the Ottawa zone, and as Phillips goes back, it's another icing call against the Islanders. End of a long shift again, but they can't call timeout. They've already used it. And there's a pretty frenetic pace to that first period, Gordon. It's slowed down here in the second. And you keep waiting for the Ottawa Senators to find that next level, that sense of urgency that should be coming out as they are with no margin of error to keep their playoff hopes alive and cannot afford to lose any points out of tonight's game. Pretty wide open first period in terms of shots. Only seven total here in the second. Four by Ottawa, three by the Islanders. Off the faceoff. Races to the loose puck. Bounces back to Lee and Lee. Hammered there by Carlson into the open Islander door. That might have hurt Hamannick. That got, that got Lee in the stanchion and Hamannick as well. So as Carlson played the hit, the door was opening. That swinging door hit Travis Hamannick, who's shaken up on the Islander bench. Got him right the inside of the knee. And now Hemsky steps in. And the play is offside as Carlson brought it in. 4.40 to go in period number two. It's the Islanders leading Eric Carlson and the Ottawa Senators. 1-0 on Scotiabank. Why is that hot? Tonight's player profile is brought to you by Asante, providing complete financial advice. Eric Carlson has struck the 20 goal and 50 assist mark this season. The first defenseman to do it since Brian Leach 13 years ago. And just a moment ago, a little bit of hit that had some unintended consequences. It's not usually one for the big hip check, but it puts Lee into the boards, it swings open, so it takes out Lee's hip into the stanchion, and the door on its way through hit Travis Hamannick on the inside of his right leg. And he was in some discomfort, so two for one for Carlson. Now Hamannick shoots, and that was off the leg of Carlson and wide. Carson reaching for it as Mark Mathot gets their first for Ottawa, but Carson stepped into him. At the line, Hamannick again fires it right on goal. Anderson the save, and Carlson clears the rebound. Now Zabanajad trying to flip that ahead. Through the feet of McCulloch, in comes Mathot with it. His shot partially blocked by Hamannick. Now McCulloch caught Nelson with a high stick. Second time Nelson's been clipped with a stick here in the game. Hemsky winds his way in. Ottawa's changing as Turris picks it up. Kyle Turris winds back in the backhand shot, and Nilsson got a piece of that to knock it wide. Now CeCe in for McCollin. And Hammond can't squeeze that by Turris, who plays it back for CeCe. Cody CeCe tees it up. That was blocked by Nelson. That stung him as the puck comes back up to center ice. Turris tries to chip it down, but he missed the puck. An icing call against Ottawa with 3.28 to go in the second period. Talk about Eric Carlson tying Brian Leach, our first guy since Brian Leach. It's a 2001 with 20 and 50. Some other pretty exclusive company leading defenseman scoring before the age of 24 and the two greatest offensive defensemen in the history of the game. Coffee Orr and now Carlson there with his second time. That's assuming his 13-point lead holds up with a couple of weeks to play. And I think that's a pretty safe assumption right now. Duncan Keith second with 57 points. Carlson's got the 70. Another big offensive year being had by Shea Weber, who leads all defense with 21 goals. Shea Weber's got double-digit power play goals, though. So Eric Carlson may be more impressive. 15 even strengthers. Here comes Turris from MacArthur. Back in front for Turris. Poke check there by Churchman. CZU, CZMAN yep. becomes Churchman. Still looking for the R in that name, but we asked him this morning. You know what? It's his name. He can say it any way he wants. Although well, you very clearly told him you get one shot at this. You tell us your name the first first time we do your game, and we're sticking with it. When Ben Zizekas with it now, Casey Zizekas spins and shoots. I told Zach Parise that 10 years ago at the World Junior. 
Is it Parise or Parisi? It's says Parise. Can't change it now. Even though everyone's calling, everyone's calling him Parisi now. My favorite is, I don't care. Whatever you want. That's oh. John Tavares says it that way. It's always the Tavares or Tavares. Yeah, his mom says Tavares, his dad says Tavares. And John says, I don't care. Now Chris Phelps comes into Matt Martin as the puck comes free in the corner. And a backhand shot taken by McDonald. Loose in front, Anderson scrolling to make a stop as Carter steps up. A little old school hockey with Chris Phillips playing on his helmet. As Hoffman slides it across to Chris Neal. Under two to go in the period, Neal. Right top of check, works it down low, Neal. Banks it back to Mathot with a shot. Bouncing in front, Carter stepped in front of that. And now Carlson holds the line, shoots, that goes just wide. But Pollock back on it. And a penalty coming as Strom took down Zibanejad. And now Mathot plays it across to Carlson. Extra skaters on now for Ottawa, it's Kyle Turris. Hemsky plays it across to Carlson, walks it and fires. Nelson makes the glove save. And with 1.30 to go in the second period, the Ottawa Senators will go to the power play for the third time. Ottawa Senators enter the power play, but they just dodge the bullet here. Chris Phillips, nice job standing up on Martin, takes his helmet off, but right afterwards, They've got a backhand chance on Craig Anderson. Rebound looks like it's gonna go to the empty net, and it just goes underneath them and out the back door oh. through the five hole. Lucky break there, and we're gonna see the penalty. A little hook in the midsection, and the vantage ad goes down, and a little kick for good measure. And that was a soft call, much like the one that went against the vantage ad earlier this period. Islanders are 29th in the league on the penalty kill in terms of percentage. Turris wins the draw back, but Carlson can't hold the line. Shots are 20-19 in favor of the Islanders, who have been dangerous shorthanded tonight, mostly from Cal Clutterbuck. In comes Nielsen now, Franz Nielsen. Wraps it around, Carlson waiting for it, Clutterbuck. Watches in closely as Carlson picks his way ahead. It back off to Turris. Now Zizek is knocked it back out. And back goes Weirkosh being watched there by Nelson. And Nelson causing all kinds of problems at center ice fires it down. I mentioned Nelson's from War Road, Minnesota. That's the home of U.S. hockey royalty. His uncle, Dave Christian, a member of the 1980 U.S. Miracle on Ice team. His grandfather's uncle won gold medals for Team USA in Squaw Valley in 1960. Now Turris plays it back across to Weirkot. Drops it down to Hemsky, feeds it from the Parker backhand shot. And Nilsson might have got just a piece of that. Now bounce away from Carlson. Here comes Clutterbuck again, short-handed. Now Clutterbuck in, lifts it wide in the backhand. Two short-handed breakaways in the game for Cal Clutterbuck. And Hemsky pitches away in for Ottawa. Drops it back for Zibanejad. Yeah, he's poke checked there by Hickey. And away come the Islanders as Sezikas fires it down. Time expires here at the end of the second period. 30 seconds of power play time to carry over into the second period. But Cal Clutterbuck has been the penalty killing story for the Islanders. Two shorthanded breakaways as New York leads Ottawa 1-0 after two. Here again, James Duffy, the panel, and our second intermission. Yeah. All right, Mike, in a game the Ottawa Senators have to have, why are they trailing after two? They haven't played with that sense of desperation that their positioning in the standings would dictate. You know the Islanders are going to come with energy, and they're going to work hard, and they're going to make you earn it, but the Ottawa Senators, they haven't been willing to earn it enough. A little bit more effort, a little bit more determination, and a lot more execution will be required in the third period if they want to get back in this game and stay in the playoff run. They can't afford to lose points out of today's game, and yet they're not playing with that sense of urgency that a team in their position would have to have if they want to continue their good run. And so the message between the second and third period is this is it. This is our season in a nutshell. If we don't get a goal, if we don't get this game in overtime and take two points out of it, we're not going to have a chance of making the playoffs. So let's ramp it up a few notches and take advantage of this power play to start the third period. Yeah, the power play starts with Zach Smith, Mike Hoffman, Chris Neal. Message sent. Weirkosh and CeCe. 
Interesting. No Carlson, no Torres, no MacArthur. No Zavanajan. I wondered about that message, Mike, as a player. I didn't like it. Because I was usually one of the guys getting pulled off until later in my career, and I loved it. Mike Smith with a backhand <laughs> shot that goes wide. And here's Weirkoff. Weirkoff winds and shoots. Nielsen makes the save with Chris Neal digging for the rebound in front, and Nielsen gives him a blocker in the face. Now, I never liked the message, because if you're one of the skill guys, say, listen, I know it hasn't been our best game, but we're far more likely to get a goal than the guys you're putting out there. And you put these guys out for the, this reason. Just simplify, get shots, get rebounds, get traffic, and get an ugly one. And a very passive-aggressive message to the players that are on the bench, including their top guys right in front of Paul McLean, Turris and MacArthur, who've had good looks on the power play. That's what he wants to see out of them. He's off one back to Mathod. Zibanejad centers it. Here's Hemsky now. Alex Hemsky tries to throw it back. Martin intercepts. And Colin McDonald knocks it back down to the Ottawa line. McDonald bumping there with Hemsky and Carlson back to pick it up. Ottawa's won nearly two thirds of the faceoffs in the game so far. Zibanejad works in. Zibanejad still with it. Chris Crossy with Hemsky sends it back. And the the drive. A bullet goes wide. And now Hemsky on it. Alex Hemsky. Gives it back to Metallic. He fans on the shot. And the puck goes back down to the Ottawa zone. Nice setups by Hemsky there, finding McCulloch in a high slot. Check national team teammates working together here in Ottawa. Now bounced away from Stone and played back to center ice. Ottawa's got Montreal here on Friday, then goes to New York for back to back against the Rangers and the Islanders. Has shoveled back in front. Now for the point. Carlo with a shot goes off the leg of Stone and wide. Comes to a sharp angle. Nielsen reaches back, makes the save, and hangs on. Well, you want to see a little something more out of the Senators, and only two minutes in, we already have. As they've moved the puck a little crisper, created a little something, and had a couple good chances on Nielsen. That's one here on McCulloch. One timer from the slot just gets blocked wide by Martin. But you like to see the puck movement across the net. Don't be fancy. Don't waste anything with an overpass, as we've seen a few times between Hemsky and Zapanajad. Just keep putting everything in on Nielsen and look for that ugly one. Face off one again by Ottawa. Phillips across to Griva. And Griva's long shot tipped wide by Cassian. Here's Connor with it now. Fourth line on the ice for the Sens. Bajo with it. Plays it back to Grabber, that shot fell John Pearson who got in the way, and Pearson hobbles to the Islander bench and dives in. And a long shot from Pajo, stopped there by Nilsson. And Phillips winds and shoots. Nilsson to save a late whack from Cassie, and now Hamannick throws down Conrad in front. The Ottawa, you like it. Keep getting shots, keep getting traffic. And you'll eventually get a piece of one as Pearson is still Feeling the effects of this block. He needs a little tough spots, and Graba gets a lot on it, but also gets it up quickly. And Harrison opens up his body, taking a little more room, which means that your pads will not be in the front of your body. He took that one on the inside of his leg. He was happy to the bench was as close as it was because he needs some help. It's no longer optional, is it, Mike? Uh, you know how much I like to exercise my option at all times, but no. No, it's not. No matter who you are, that's how you have to play defense in the NHL. And the puck is injuring more and more players as time goes along. Broken feet, broken bones and leg, broken hands. You know, there is a point we made. The goalies were in 10 grand with an equipment. They don't score goals. Why do you have to block shots? You're preaching the choir. You're preaching the choir because you're in perfect spot. I enjoy just, you know what? Goalie's got all the gear, and they're better at it than I am. They can slide their way in front of it. Well, we're back at it tomorrow night with the NHL on TSN. It's the Boston Bruins who are leading Detroit tonight. In Toronto to take on the Leafs. They have to be on their way at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Live streaming also available on TSN.ca and TSN Go.
Maple Leafs give up games in hand to everyone in that chase, but they are still alive in the race for the final playoff spot in the East. And we'll get a tired Boston Bruins team playing in Detroit. I don't know if fatigue really well, bothers the Bruins at this point. You know what? They could play a double header tonight. Just right. <laughs> exactly. They might be still okay. Uh, and they have now moved to the top of the list the Bruins have on the odds makers list of Stanley Cup favorites. Moved out by Helmo. And in comes Mike Helmo with it now. Healing back in the corner, throws it back in front. And just missed Johan Sundstrom with that pass. Now Sundstrom plays it back to Helmo. Helmo taking down the corner. Sundstrom in there as well. Helmo throws it back down for Suzuki. Casey Suzuki spins away from Mathai. Down to Helmo, loose in front of backhand shot, and Anderson snags the glove out and makes the stop. Mike Helmo, another one of those young rookies, making his debut, played in Owens Town in the OHL, and throws a pretty good speed stick with the disc here. Against Mark Mathot, creates one chance there. Strong on the puck, quick pull, chip past Pajot, tries to get a far side on Craig Anderson, who makes a good save. He has brought some energy and some irritation, which is what they're looking for out of him. Nelson steps in against Sabanajad. The puck bounces off lines and Don Henderson, Dallas Hemsky. Hemsky made some interesting comments that you heard the panel talk about, about potentially staying in Ottawa. He has some ties to the area, played junior hockey across the river in Gatineau, then known as Hull. Did Bobby, Dennis, and Brett have to change their names as well? I don't think so. And she wants to know what's going to happen with Jason Spezza. Here's Eric Carlson with sharp angle shot. Nilsson save, and with McCulloch in the crease battling, Nilsson able to hang on, and Anders Nilsson, who allowed one goal on 24 shots in a shootout winning against New Jersey in his last start, has turned away all 25 he's faced here tonight. He's certainly one of the new age goalies, six foot five, and Takes up a lot of net, but look at the battle in front between Gahan and McCullough. McCullough trying to get in to get a stick available to tip, but Hahn ties him up, seals him off with his hands into his stick, and then watch his left leg get out in front right here and try to get a little leverage. And eventually knocking McCullough down. Good job using the full body to seal out the forward by Calvin Gahan. So the face off in the Islander zone, Smith will step in for it against Nielsen. Churchman tries to limit around, but Hoffman got in the way. Stepping up is Neal. Down low to Smith. Back Smith. Throws it back in front. Loose puck. Neal takes a whack at that. And again, Nielsen hangs on as Franz Nielsen gets into Chris Neal's grill. Pretty sure nothing will come of that. I would think Franz Nielsen wouldn't let that escalate at all if he could help it. But you like to see the young Islanders, all five of them, right down to the crease trying to help out their goaltender and that's how you have to play defense and that's how you have to stick together if you don't have a fighter out there and the Islanders certainly do not and we're getting pushing the shuffle from Chris Neal everyone just get in and tie up and support each other and again Smith against Nielsen for the faceoff Scramble draw, controlled by Ottawa. Hoffman throws it in front here. Neal with a shot, that's blocked by Nielsen. Puck still loose in front, but he picked up by Lee, but he can't clear it away. Jack Smith, Patrick Weircock with a shot, blocked by Nielsen. And Bailey can't clear it out, as Cece gloved it down, the puck finally leaves his own. And Weircock's back for it. Up ahead to Smith. Comes with 5 1 Ottawa here in the third period. Smith, the stone with a shot, he wasn't that high and wide. Mark Stone's got a big league shot, just missed the net there. Now Paul McDonald loose. McDonald drops it back, and a shot fired wide by Ryan Stone. He did all that. He had Anderson at his mercy. Now hooked ahead by Stone. Helped to arrive and plays it around as Turris is fresh off the bench for McCarthy. 
Clark across the center, it just missed Stone. Now Carlson shoots at Clark and Clark. I got him. Now Mathot back with it. Harrison's back on the ice after blocking that shot. Check that, that's Sunson out there now. We've not seen Harrison since blocking the shot. And Sezika. Plays that around as Helmo was looking for it. Anderson plays it away from him. Right, loose down for Helmo. Throws it in front. Eric Carlson high off the glass. Now it's set back down to the outer zone. And now we got a tripping call. Coming to the Islanders with 13.43 to go in the third period. Ottawa is going to the power play when Scotiabank wins the net hockey returns after this. Ottawa both with the power play, but Brent Wallace has more on Eric Griba's new calling. Well, Gordon, Eric Griba is an avid outdoorsman, but he's turned that passion now into a business. Last week, he and two partners launched Capital Waterfowling, the makers of duck and goose calls. They have three models in stock. You can't get them in storage. You got to go to Capital Waterfowling. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. All right. Well, here you go. <laughs> now, Zach Smith is a celebrity endorser, but he has yet to receive any, so he really needs to know who to talk to, apparently. That wasn't bad. McCulloch across the rear cock now with a power play. Shoots, that goes wide. So far, no ducks. Mallard for Anaheim. There's a ball here, Wally, but keep at it. Take some time. Now, we're at Kosh. Fires right on. Nielsen makes the stop. Bouncing puck and puck. Still loose. Neal digging for it. He bounced score. Milan McCulloch puts it home. Nielsen throws his stick in disgust. But Ottawa's tied on a power play goal. Talk about the need to get an ugly one to raise the compete level and the battle around the front of the net. Well, that's what this was. Nothing pretty about this goal whatsoever. As it's just Weirkos just teeing off the blue line, gets in, crazy rebound, bouncing all around. Nielsen can't quite get a glove on it. Oh, never had it. And McCulloch on the outside of the pile. Pulls it clean. Nice job by the referees identifying the puck here. Nothing wrong with that. Nobody's doing anything wrong. Good. No calls by Denny LaRue, right on the back of the net. Great positioning to spot the puck. Great battle in front by Chris Neal, tying up the two defensemen, allowing McCulloch to get the loose puck and tuck it home. 17th of the year for Milan McCulloch, who's got four goals in his last four games, and it's tied at one here in the third. Does Ottawa bring McCulloch back next year? Pending unrestricted free agent. Battle of bad news, probably most of last year. But Ottawa with a power play goal. Both goals the game scoring the man advantage. Now MacArthur with it. For Torres. Plays it back. Stone with a drive. He hammered that high and wide off the glass. And now MacArthur took a stick or something in the face. Mates on the ice, however. Boy, Stone can really shoot it. Just missed the net there. Now Krabba comes dancing in. Drops it back for Turris. And Turris with a shot that goes off a leg. Bounces down to Stone for Turris. Back in front of the pass. Knocked away by Bailey. And Hickey out to the line to Bailey. Will slide that down as Anders Lee works his way in. Spielman sends it on goal. is put away by Anderson. And MacArthur has it now for Ottawa. 28-21, the shots on goal in favor of the Senators. And now Donovan goes back, that's an icing call against Ottawa here in the third period. A mad scramble in front for that goal. And Brock Nelson comes out a little worse for wear, clipped up in his lip. And watch as it's Chris Neal stick, who comes up right there, catches him while he's standing up. And ooh, that's a missed call there, but so puck focused, like everybody was the referee that, in that mass of humanity, they couldn't find what the infraction was, but McCulloch is the beneficiary as he gets a tying goal. Shots are 8-2 Ottawa now here in the third. Ottawa enters play, five points on the final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference, the wild card spot. Not mathematically out, but likely have to run the table down the stretch here. In order to make it, Columbus right now holds down that final playoff spot. In comes Brock Nelson now. 
with the lap from Grimer. That's a penalty coming to Ottawa. As Smith touches up, and the slash will be called to Grimer. And the Islanders are going back to the power play. And Ottawa, which takes more minor penalties and is shorthanded more than any other team in the league, down a man here in the third period. There's been a series of calls that have been very tight the entire game. And Grimer just a little slash in the hands there, knocks a stick out of Nelson's hand, but that's something that's just not called consistently, and that's where the complaining comes from both benches is the consistency factor. But Ottawa had trouble killing penalties off. They need a big one now, almost halfway through this third period. Nielsen, Lee, Nelson up front, Donovan, and Strom on the back end of the Islander power play. So no Oposo, no Tavares in the lineup for the Islanders. Tavares, of course, gone for the season. Oposo's been out for the last week or so. Now Torres picks up the pass. Who can pass? Torres, short hand, and Torres in! Throws it wide as Strom got a stick on him. And now Nielsen has lost his goal stick as the Islanders bring it back the other way. Back down at the line and laid offside indicated as the Islanders have to tag up again. And now the thought fires the puck back down to the Islanders' zone. Great short-handed chance for Kyle Turris. And now Donovan brings it back for the Islanders. And Strom can't hold it. Being harassed there by McCulloch now. As Milan McCulloch comes busting in, Nielsen. Around for Strom, is loose in front of the Islander goal. And finally, Nielsen sweeps that away. Bailey for Strom. Now Ryan still with a shot kicked away by Anderson. Zizekas. Throws it back for Bailey, walking out in front. Zibanejad got a stick on him. Bailey. Needs that back to Hamannick, across for DeHaan. Calvin DeHaan, hard pass down to Strom, throws it back to Bailey walking in. That can to lose it, but they score! Looked like Casey Zizekas got a stick on it. A power play goal, and the Islanders are back on top, 2-1. To The other was finding all kinds of open ice on that far post. Had one look initially, and then eventually works its way back around. And it's got so much time. A nice pass off through by Strom. It takes it back short side. And Puck just caroms around. Tzizekas dives in. And that's too easy to pass to make over there. It's a CC chasing. You're right. Tzizekas a little harder on his stick. Finding that loose puck to poke it in. And the penalty kill. I mean, lack of ability to do so for the Ottawa Senators comes back to haunt again. First goal in 34 games for Zizekas, who last scored on January 2nd against Chicago. But for the Ottawa Senators, another power play goal against. That is 60 on the year, tied with Florida for the most power play goals allowed this season. And a cost and slashing penalty to Eric Ryba. Now Clutterbuck works in, so the once again trailing. And here comes Condra with a chance of a rolling puck. Eric Condra. Trying to drop that back. Clutterbuck tagged there with Cassian. And Weirkosh has it. Weirkosh comes around. Clutterbuck works in and shoots. Lamps off a stick and high. And now Harrison back on the ice for the Islanders after blocking that shot earlier. Plays it down to the Ottawa zone. Midway point of the third period. 2-1 the Islanders lead. They won the first game of the year, 5-4 in a shootout. Now Neal with it. Now he goes to Phillips, back down to Smith for Neal. Up for Chris Phillips, a sharp angle shot, stopped by Nilsson. Strom trying to squeeze that by Hoffman, now Martin picks it up and runs into CeCe. Now the line by Zizekas who fires up right down to Anderson. Martin plays it down for Sezikis. Casey Sezikis. Picks out the loose puck. And Neal with it now for Ottawa. And Neal's become a big part of the story for Ottawa in the third period. Hand pass called against the Sens. And Casey Sezikis with a power play goal. Puts the Islanders back in front on Scotiabank. Wins it at Hawk. Who's got the Islander go-ahead goal? The Hans got white tape on his stick. Sezikis has black tape.
now. It looks to me like Zizekas might just run right into Dahan's stick. Look at the white tape. Puck's definitely on the stick there. Zizekas comes in from behind, but is he pushing just the shaft of Dahan's stick, or did he get a piece of it? Now, it's just 34 games for Zizekas, so he'll probably want to take credit for it. And if Dahan's a good teammate, he'll just take the assist and get Zizekas off the side. Now, Seister with it. Eric Carlson has had just three shifts and three minutes and 20 seconds of ice time in the third period. He would normally, by now, have at least eight minutes. He's out there now, playing his fourth shift. He's played 500 more minutes this year than any other Ottawa player. I'm all for sending messages, but when he's on the line, even if he's having an off game, if you need a goal, you have to keep putting him out there. There's no time to worry about tightening him up defensively. Just gotta let him go and see what happens. In, fire saved by Nilsson, rebound bounced away from McCollum. And brought ahead by Hamannick for the Islanders. You saw him score a dandy rush against Columbus, now drops it off, and the puck fired off the blocker by Lee. Rebound shot wide by DeHaan. And now Lee back with it. And his Lee back to Travis Hamannick, his shot partially blocked. Triples down to Nielsen. Now Lee with it. Benajad trying to find McCulloch, who finally chips it back down to the Islanders' zone. Seven and a half to go in the third period. Islanders lead 2-1. All three goals in the game scored in the power play. And there's a clearing attempt. The might have hit Mike Johnson. He's going to check. Got a piece of me. Oh, no. Scotiabank Wednesday Night Hockey on TSN is brought to you by Scotiabank. You're richer than you think. And Mike, we all know how much you oppose blocking shots. That's right. In a suit, you've got to be out of your mind. Come on, get out of the way. Just like I was playing, you just got to turn your back and hope that it doesn't hit you. <laughs> I have to talk to Cody CC after the game here. Can't be tripping pucks in this little boat in the booth here. Grabbing out with it. Drops it off for Phillips. Chipped ahead by Hoffman. And Zach Smith gets there for Ottawa. For Neal. There's Neal loose down low. Neal plays it back in front. Smith's shot was blocked in front by Hickey that broke his stick. Now drive a long shot that's tip blocked by Smith. Hickey still with no stick. Smith back for Hoffman. Now Hickey has a forward stick. That one from Nelson. Got on goal by Smith at the fucking line. And the puck's still loose for Smith. Looking for Phillips, and at the line, Hoffman couldn't hold it. Hoffman, quickly ahead for Smith. That can't get down to the island. So the Ottawa will change. Six and a half to go in the third period. Hoffman back to see Smith. watched there by Colin McDonald. Lose it, but McDonald fires in this top corner. And MacArthur snaps that pass ahead for Stone along with Turris. Throws it back in front. Parker has it back to Nick Danilak. Now Martin had his pocket picked by Stone. And Donovan finally lifts it up to center ice. Under six to go in the third period. Weird dodge up ahead for Stone. Stone shovels out wide to the goal. And now here's Cece with it. In for Kerr, shoots off the outside of the post. Bounces down to Stone. Feeds in front for MacArthur, couldn't get a shot away. And now Stone back on it. Strong shift for this line. As Turris now turns it over to Sezikis. And Turris got buried behind the play by Donovan. Now the drop pass for DeHaan. In comes Calvin DeHaan. And the throw is back in front. Hemsky intercepts. And a chance down for Ottawa, breaking up three wide. Hemsky. In with McCulloch and Zibanejad, the pass broken up by Sezikis, and Zibanejad reaching for it, he was knocked down. McCulloch being held in front of the goal. He's tangled up there with Helmo. And the puck's back at center ice. This is not the lovable Helmo. This is the nasty Helmo. Now Bailey with it. Up ahead for Lee. Under five to go in the third period. 
Loose puck inside and goal. Nielsen with a shot turned away by Anderson. And McCulloch ahead for Condra. Up for Eric Carlson leading the rush. And the pass was off a broken stick to Condra. Pinball's down in front. Racing was Pancho, the line held by Mathai. Marshall thought falling, shoots Nielsen's hey, rebound, loose in front, Condra couldn't find it. And back comes Bailey the other way for the Islanders. As he plays it down in the send zone, as Mathai is back for Al Hoffman, out for Pancho along with Condra. Eric Condra in, and that shot knocked away by the blocker of Nielsen. Go, go. Phillips plays it down to Condra, his centering pass broken up by Hickey. Now Condor back with it, to the point for Hoffman, and Clutterbuck got a stick on that. Harris, up ahead for Stone, and headlong into Carter. Now Phillips steps up to knock down the clearing attempt, throws it back in front, Nielsen elects not to glove it, slots away with a stick. Here's Phillips on now. Chris Phillips. In for Stone, his centering pass goes to Griba, who's packing at that puck now. Carter digging for him. Loose behind the goal for Terrace, along with Stone. Here's Terrace. Spins away from Strom, but Strom banks it off that broken stick. A lucky back break. Out. That would have been an icing. Now Griba slaps it back the other way, and that will be an icing call against Ottawa with 3.10 to go in the third period. Ottawa knows it's desperation time, so they're putting everything they can at the net. First one's the Banajad, stays with it, trying to find the rebound with those long legs, and Nielsen taking the potes away, and talked about the lovable Helmo. Well, <laughs> it's all tied up with McCulloch. And then a little bit later, again, rebounds, tips, and that's where Ottawa's best chance have come from in this third period. Ottawa has won 32 of the 50 draws in the game. Grab it. Trying to snap that ahead for Phillips. No. He's got a loose glove down there. Blocking to an out. Zeke is off the faceoff. Dropped it. The list of things you don't want to play without, I think a glove would be right up there. As McCulloch lost the puck to Sezikis. Bare handed. He goes slash his hand to see if he wants to handle that puck with no gloves. He would not. Uh, I see it's on the line. I just might. A side of you we've never seen before. Here's <laughs> Carlson with it at center ice. Two and a half to go in the third period. Hammond. Plays it back up to center ice. And here's Carlson. Quickly ahead for Zabanajan. Okay. Shots are 14-7 Ottawa here in the third period. Now Nielsen picks it up. Spins off Carlson, tangle legs. Weird guys for Hoffman. Try to bank it out, now Zibanejad's away from the sand. Up ahead to Carlson, Eric Carlson back for Hemsky. And the pass bounces back to Carlson. Under two to go in the third period. Keep an eye on Anderson now in the Ottawa goal. Smith. Kicks that down. As Carlson makes his way off the ice. Back Smith. Works off the boards, fires it wide, Neal reaching for it. And Clutterbuck plays it back out. Harrison flaxes that puck back down to the Ottawa zone and Smith picks it up. 190 seconds to go in the third period. Cody Cece brings it ahead. Warm a clock, gains center ice and fires it down. So far, Anderson remains halfway between the Ottawa goal and the bench. Carlson back out there across for Cece. And Cece shooting, gloved down by DeHaan. Center ice, final minute now, the third period. Ronald McDonald plays it in deep, Anderson leaves it there for Carlson. For Terrace. Here comes Anderson to the Ottawa bench. Terrace with a shot. Nilsson missed, plays it loose in front. Terrace took a whack at that, and Anders Nilsson able to hang on with 43.2 seconds left. Ottawa's going to call timeout here. And diagram a faceoff play down the goal. Nilsson calls this one, pops it right back in the air, mishandles it. 
probably wouldn't have counted as Kyle Torres put it towards him with his bare hand, but keep putting pucks on the net, see what Nielsen can do with it here. He pulls out this game. The performer of the game is brought to you by GMC Sierra. And in a game that hasn't had a ton of scoring, special teams dominate. It's been Josh Bailey who's been very good in that department. What an unbelievable shot to get the Islanders on the board. And then right after Ottawa had tied the game up, Josh Bailey showed a little patience, some good hands to get that puck in and around Craig Anderson for what right now would be the game-winning goal. Ryan McCulloch's got six goals his last 26 shots. He's got four in his last four games. Talked about the face-off dominance of the Senators all game long. Well, here's the biggest one here. Kyle Turris on his strong side is going to be able to pull this one back on his backhand and watch for Chris Neal to park himself right in front of Anders Nielsen for the duration of this game. So Turris against Nielsen. The Ottawa net remains empty. And Turris won that draw, wasn't done fairly. Reset the clock, got the second back on. Very quickly they have. Turris won seven of 10 draws against Nielsen tonight. And that time Nielsen wins it. Hamannick levels it off the glass, but held at the line neatly by Zavanajan. Here's Stone with it now. 35 seconds to go in the period. Plays it back hard to Zibanejad. And is that down to Turris with a shot. It goes off the leg of Nielsen. And now DeHaan with some time. Pokes it ahead. And Calvin DeHaan skates the puck out of his own for the Islanders. Now pass the head of MacArthur. Big time for MacArthur. Drops it back for Neal. The pass misfires. Connor Buck finds Nelson. Brock Nelson shoots and misses wide in the backhand. 10 seconds to go in the period. And Carlson will dash away from Nelson. A penalty coming to the Islanders. Here comes Zibanejad. Feeds it back in front of MacArthur's backhand shot goes wide. Now hang on. Yeah, there's still there's going to be time poked left. it off MacArthur. Delayed penalty was going to be called, so they will add probably yeah, one point something. There'll be the a clock. face off in the Islander zone. Now, Carlson wouldn't have known, but if you throw the puck across to the Islanders, that would have brought a face-off right back down to the Islanders' zone. I don't think he knew, and the crowd got loud. Bench did not communicate with him. And here's a little hook here. And yeah, he could have dumped that all the way down onto Nielsen in, say, four seconds, but he's thinking they got to score off the rush. No way of knowing for him, though. Yeah, so Zach Smith comes out, left-hander on his strong side. He's going to try to pull it back for a shot. No time has been posted yet. It's got to, I think it's got to be less than two. As it was a late touch by Hamannick. And the overpassing has been a problem for tonight's game. We've seen Zibanejad and Hemsky a few different times. It looks like they're going to get a break after Dehana turned it over right here. And MacArthur's got a little room to go down the wall. And then he throws this one back to nobody in particular instead of putting it at the net. Now they put two seconds on for a moment, now they've taken that off. Now it is two seconds. So the face off will be taken by Smith against Sezika. Two and a half now on the clock. Draw one, turns a backhand shot, gets it down to Nilsson as time expires. Or did it? Are they going to play some more time here? No, the Islanders have won it two to one. Initially, they said it'd be another face-off in the Islanders zone, but the Islanders with a power play goal from Casey Sezikis in the third period will leave Ottawa with a two-one win, a result that all but ends Ottawa's playoff hopes. Two-one, the final score for Mike Johnson, Brett Wallace, and all of us at TSN. I'm Gord Miller. This has been a presentation of TSN, Canada's Sports Leader.